So I am also presenting this on a Zoom webinar. Um, so this is an introduction to air test systems. This is our highest conviction investment right now here at Halter Ferguson Financial. Uh, we do own Tesla as well for clients. Um, want to share today um, why it is our highest conviction idea, um, what that means. So highest conviction for us means that uh, we feel the risk reward um, or the reward risk ratio is, is um, the highest. Um, and this is over a shorter time period than Tesla. Uh, certainly um, there's some Tesla nares uh, joining us who um, uh, you know, feel that Tesla could, you know, 100x over the next uh, 18 or so years, something like that. Um, I might agree with that, <laughs> but I think there's some other opportunities uh, uh, on the board here. Uh, first, a disclaimer, and I'll talk a little bit of, more about what it means to be the highest conviction idea. Um, let's see here. So it's just sharing this. Okay. So um, I'm an investment advisor. Uh, this is not investment advice. Um, Halter Ferguson Financial. We're a firm in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, did I just stop sharing already? Sorry about that. And um, as of today, our clients and employees own um, AIR stock, A-E-H-R stock and or options and thereby stand to material, materially benefit from a rise in the share price. Um, past performance is no assurance of future results. Um, so there's that. Uh, we may not update our recommendations. I'm due for an update. I, I last did a written update here uh, July 21st, 2022. There's tons of different uh, links that I've provided so you can do your own research and get familiar with the space. Um, so what does it mean to be our highest conviction idea? Um, as I said, highest reward to risk, uh, but it doesn't mean it's our largest holding. Um, error test systems, as I will share with you, has some unique risks to the business and some unique opportunities. Because of the nature of those risks, um, it doesn't necessarily make sense to uh, treat this similarly to a um, what I would call a lower risk investment like Tesla, where um, the shape of things um, seems a bit more certain. Um, so that's what we mean by highest conviction idea. Um, also, I think the growth for air test systems is going to happen over a shorter period of time. Um, generally, what they do is they make systems that help the makers of silicon carbide chips. So silicon carbide chips get made on these, these wafers. And um, but before they are made in the wafers, silicon carbide has to be um, made from very hot um, this silicon, sil silica and the silicon add to carbon. Um, it, it gets made in an arc furnace, which is uh, 2,500 degrees Celsius. And silicon carbide crystals can form into 200 different configurations. But uh, the makers of silicon carbide want one type of crystal. So you have to bake it just right. <laughs> um, so there's a, a lot to that. Um, so then it, it comes in these long things called uh, bools. Um, so they drop it down, they, they make it into a, a spherical column, and then they cut it, they cut them in the wafers. And then these wafers go into the semiconductor type of process where um, they use lasers and things to cut out shapes or patterns, and they use photo mass for this. Um, so just kind of stay with me here. <laughs> Don't worry about each term. And you cut out the design of your uh, semiconductor chip uh, using these lasers, and then you add things to it like metal 
or or other things. Um, so then then you have a wafer with all these devices on it once you do all your addition and sub subtraction. And then what you need to do is these chips operate primarily, the main use for these chips is traction inverters on electric motors. It's a high temperature, high voltage environment. And when you use silicon chips, it ends up in a range loss of 10 to 20%. So what we see with legacy automakers is their intentions right now aren't to make millions of a given model. Their intention is to maybe make 500,000 of a, uh, 50,000 of a certain model. So they are not generally not including silicon carbide, but longer term, as we transition to more and more EVs, uh, generally car makers are gonna need to compete more on range. What Tesla has done besides building the electric vehicle from the bottom up and taking out parts, taking out costs, making things more energy efficient is they were one of the first to go really big into silicon carbide and starting with the Model 3, started using that in um, both engines and then they switched um, everything over to silicon carbide. Their main supplier, for silicon carbide chips starting out was ST Microelectronics. They're still the number one player, um, but relatively recently on semiconductor or on semi, and the CEO from that group is from Cypress uh, Semiconductors and Cypress was acquired. Uh, so they have a really good management team. They went over to on semi. And what's different about on semi is they were the first to adopt in a big way, um, air test systems. And so what air does is you have to burn in these devices because on these traction inverters, you have um, 48 on each traction inverter. Um, and if one of the 48 silicon carbide devices fails, your traction inverter fails and your car stops and it might stop in the middle of the road. And that's a, that's a safety problem, um, but it's uh, you know something that you don't wanna have happen as a car maker. So what they need to do is burn in these silicon carbide chips for about 10 hours. Um, different makers of silicon carbide are trying to do it in shorter time, um, but what the CEO of Air Test Systems is finding and showing them is that uh, you know they might try and do the burn in in six hours to try and save time and produce faster. Um, but what they found is that um, more defects show up in hours uh, eight, eight, nine, and ten. Um, so then these these chip makers end up going to the ten to twelve hour burn in time. So what happens is the wafer gets made. And then it gets loaded into the test system and the burn-in system. And it, it's basically a uh, giant oven. It could be the size of a car um, or a, maybe a little smaller. And uh, you, you have a, you load in the wafer and then you, you put in a test uh, probe system. And the old way of doing it is you actually make physical contact with the silicon silicon carbide wafer in order to put electrical current through it and test each device and see what defects there are, where is it performing but wavering. Um, so you have to make contact and you know doing this a bunch of times is going to wear it down um, and, and you're going to need to get a new uh, test card. Um, what air test systems has done that's uh, revolutionary is they made a, a probe system where it doesn't have to make physical contact. And because of this, they can also load in 18 wafers into one test system. So you, you load in all the wafers, there's an alignment system uh, process that happens, then you test them all once you get them all aligned and you see which ones, uh, how they're behaving, and you get all your measurements and your readings, and then they burn it in for 10 to 12 hours. Um, 
And then you, and then once the burn in is done, you test them again and you find out which ones, um, uh, you know, are good or not. And, and essentially you take the ones that are good and then you put them into your traction and burgers. Um, so, you know, one maker of traction and burgers would be Bosch. Um, I think uh, Tesla may be making their own now, but essentially Tesla is buying the silicon carbide MOSFETs um, from the likes of ST Microelectronics and OnSemi. Um, so I'm going to show you what one of these looks like. Um, so it's very hard to make the silicon carbide. Um, so here's what a silicon carbide MOSFET looks like. Um, and you, you have to be able to make the wafers and then you need to produce it in, in, um, in quantity, but also with a high level of yield. Um, and the silicon carbide makers themselves do not know how they're gonna be able to produce enough to be able to um, serve all the legacy car makers that have all these intentions to suddenly make uh, millions of cars by 2024 or 2025. Uh, they don't know how they're gonna do it, okay? So <clears throat> that to me says there's a, a demand problem <laughs> as far as there's too much demand and they don't know how they're gonna supply it. So um, the silicon carbide makers are scrambling to increase their factory capacity. And when they're doing that, they're, they're increasing capacity to be able to make the silicon carbide material, um, or they're ordering it from people like Wolfspeed. Wolfspeed is the primary maker of this material, uh, but maybe down the road, they may not be selling it to others because they're <laughs> busy using it or they won't sell as much. Um, so if you're a maker of these chips, you're figuring out how am I gonna get the material, um, but then you're figuring out where am I gonna put the factories and um, then figuring out your burn-in system. So burn-in takes such a long time that it is a bottleneck and it's extremely important to be able to um, burn in 18 of these wafers at the same time. Um, and air test systems is the only one who can do this. Um, so as far as I'm aware, um, the air system is at least 10 times uh, more efficient than the closest competitor. Um, it's patented. Um, it's in one system. So it's in uh, something that's you know, maybe a little smaller than a car. Um, and you can do 18 at a time. So just imagine a factory space of 18 cars um, versus one car. <laughs> and you have all the heat to do the oven. Um, it, it, if you're doing 18 ovens instead of one, uh, that's a lot of more heat that you're using. Um, and it's just a lot more time. You can go to one station to load in 18 wafers. Um, so the CEO of Air Test Systems has been um, doing wafer burn-in and testing for essentially his whole uh, professional life. He started doing this with uh, Hewlett Packard and others. Um, so basically he's been waiting his whole life for this. <laughs> and now you have the tsunami where electric vehicles are going exponential and uh, they're figuring out how to make these, uh, these, these chips and they need a lot of test systems. So let me get into some of the unique uh, risks about air test systems. But um, before I do that, I want to show you just where you can go to get information. Um, so Google is your friend. Um, so I'm just zooming in for air test systems, investor relations. I'm going to go there. Um, you can learn about the management team and find out about their news. Here you can read about quarterly reports or look at um, presentations they've done either in the past. Um, sometimes you can catch a video of, of a presentation they've done. Um, and uh, they have earnings, earnings releases as well. Um, so what drew my attention to air test systems is I have a coworker who's been following this for a while. 
and they flipped up profitability. And the reason they did is because uh, on semiconductor came in last year and started buying a bunch of their equipment, implementing it into their factory. And um, essentially air test systems, um, they like um, more than doubled their, or around doubled their revenue from uh, pre-COVID levels. Uh, COVID did affect their sales, their ability to um, to get in to see customers. Um, so there's that. And um, what you need to do with a company like this is um, last year they had sales of $50 million. Uh, so don't, don't turn off your ears <laughs> at hearing that. Um, and they had uh, profits of, I think, 10 million or more. Um, and uh, the orders from on semi were so aggressive and so sudden that um, in the middle of the, the their fiscal year, which ends in May, um, so the latest one ended May of 2022, in the middle of the fiscal year, they thought they were going to do about 30 million that year. Um, but then they updated their guidance in around March and said, we're going to do 50 million here. So <laughs> that's a uh, 66% uh, higher. Um, and they ended up doing that. And the reason is, is because on semi, they're very focused on margins. Um, unlike ST microelectronics, in my opinion, ST is focused on being the leader in um, all these different areas of microelectronics. Um, on semi is very focused on margins. So they're they're selling awful businesses, that kind of thing. Um, so that was pretty radical. Um, I wanna show you another source. Um, so of that 50 million, let me share my screen again. Of that 50 million, if all they did was sell complete systems and not sell any consumable, not sell any, um, reoccurring consumables um they would be they would have sold maybe 12 systems uh, each system is about four and a half million dollars so if you do a search for air you see they um won an order for four and a half million dollars um and and this one looks like it's from consumables only um but there's there's orders they have where it's basically four and a half million dollars because they're selling the um, the oven. They're selling all the contact probes. Um, they're selling an aligner to go into it and, and maybe even an aligner that's automated. Um, so what I do in my process is I really want to see um, what is being said on earnings calls to understand the company more. So I am subscribed to Seeking Alpha, and I go in here and I, I read the transcripts. If there's no audio, sometimes I'll listen to the audio as well. Obviously, on many uh, profits calls or earnings calls, the CEOs are going to be very bullish. Um, so you, you got to be careful of that. Um, one big warning sign, though, is um, when you're listening to a company and the CEO is not uh, bullish on the prospects. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies with no profits where um, you look at their presentation, you read the call, and, and you kind of wonder why um, people are giving them that valuation. So I'll go in there. I'll read the transcript. I'm on the last couple of calls asking some questions. Um, I'll also go in and look at valuation, um, but I, I, I tend to look at that last. Um, I might screen for it a bit, but I'll, I'll look at it last. So I'll go to sites like Yahoo Finance, where I also subscribe to uh, Zach's uh, research screener uh, for that. Um, so essentially, um, air test systems is going from one major customer. So uh, each of their sales is very binary in that uh, $4.5 million of $50 million, that's essentially uh, 9% of their revenues last year. So one full system uh, for them, 9% of the revenues last year. 
that's going to change over time, but that's very binary. The other, the other piece of it that scares people is they're currently at one major customer through uh, the end of May of, of this past year, but now they're adding more customers, but they haven't yet become major customers yet, uh, but they will. Uh, I'm very, very confident of that. That's my opinion. Um, so on semi was 82% of air test systems revenues. So this is another risk factor in, um, in the business where they need to get more customers. They're going to grow with OnSemi. OnSemi um, is tripling their silicon carbide uh, this year versus the prior year. And they're going to get to more than a $1 billion run rate by the end of next year. Um, ST Microelectronics is growing their capacity. Um, Infineon is building a big factory in Malaysia by 2024. Uh, to, uh, 2.4 billion. Um, one of the recent slides from air test systems showed an Infineon device. Um, so it looks like they may be serving Infineon. Uh, Wolf Speed is rumored to um, be a major customer for them and um, should be for their Mohawk Valley, New York facility. So that hasn't, um, it hasn't ramped yet. They're more in like a trial run thing and their latest earnings, they said that uh, things look pretty good from that. Um, so essentially you have air going from one customer to potentially five or six in about two to three years. Um, so that means their, their revenues um, should at least 4X. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at now. This is why it's our um, highest conviction idea, despite um, the fact that it's um, more than doubled from early July. Um, it's up about 250, 150%, so about 2.5x 2, 2 um, from that time. Um, let me share a little more on my screen. Um, they don't have any debt. They're growing their cash. Um, if when you look at it, you want to look at full years and you want to look at the revenues and their profitability. And in the article I shared earlier, which is at um, HF Financial slash air dash test dash systems, um, I go through evaluation and look at, um, I'm going to Twitter if I have it. And I, I look at their margin. So what, what's the margin if they didn't have to add any, um, any new overhead? And essentially on two calls ago, I guessed that their margin without new overhead was 60%. I said that to the CEO and he said I was within a point. <laughs> like I'm not, in, <laughs> I'm not in their business. I don't have access to their financials. So uh, that was just me doing some napkin math. Um, but then when I, I look at modeling out uh, some conservative valuation, I look at um, how did uh, stock-based compensation grow as revenues grew? How did um, SG&A, what, what portion of the new revenues uh, were SG&A and R&D um, of those new revenues? So to figure out, okay, if, if the growth is beefy from here, uh, what what may fall to the bottom line? Um, air test systems does not make their own um, burn-in systems. They're made by a contract manufacturer. Uh, they are very light as a business. Um, I want to share some other some other things. Um, I hope I'm sharing the right screen. So let me stop and reshare. Um, there was a really good interview. So if, if you read my article, then you, you read some of the earnings call transcripts, you see an explainer. Um, Gain Erickson is the CEO of Air Test Systems. Um, 
you can see an ex a presentation of his on YouTube. Um, there's one from a year ago. Um, but there's also this interview that um, Ben, um, I'm going to mess up his last name, <laughs> this Ben guy did um, from Twitter. He has a YouTube channel called Story Trading. And this interview that Gain Erickson did, he's talking about all the potential customers they have um, and the orders are starting to actually happen. Um, so what, with the orders, um, they announced uh, the, the old school investors of air test systems have been waiting for big customer number two to finally wait in and um, buy from air test systems and size. Uh, and and frankly, customer three, et cetera. Um, so in September 13th, um, there was an order from a new customer um, that should become a big customer uh, that was announced. And then October 13th, there was another news piece where um, it read almost exactly like the, <laughs> the release from September but it's from another new customer for another new system. So basically they're ordering the full boat, they're ordering the, the burn-in unit um, where you can load your probers. They are bought, they're ordering the probes and uh, they're ordering the aligner um, and, and possibly the automated aligner. Uh, mentioning the automated aligner, it's not, a a total done deal with the technology. So that's another risk. Uh, it's another risk that they don't um, figure out how to make it automated. But right now, um, silicon carbide is a very auto, uh, manual process and all the makers are trying to get more automated. Uh, even Wolf Speed admitted, and they're supposed to be you know, one of the leaders in the space or one of the most knowledgeable that they're, um, North Carolina plant, which is their old uh, silicon carbide plant, is uh, largely manual. Um, so they're going from manual to automated, and they want to figure out how to automate um, as much steps as makes sense. But right now, in in these environments, you have a large clean room where you're you're filtering the air. You have people in bunny suits, and uh, the wafers come off the line or they arrive in a ship uh, in, in, a, in shipping and you load them into the burn-in and test unit um, manually and then the aligner uh, gets it exact so that it can it can test everything perfectly. Um, so that's another risk, but it's also a potential upside in that um, if air test systems can figure out how to automate the loading of the wafers, um, the CEO, Gain Erickson, has said that um, makers of SSD hard drives, that's the solid state hard drives, um, basically it's, it's memory units. And um, these memory units um, are made on wafers and they would need to test these um, memory units in mass. So they wouldn't actually burn in the memory units, but if they could load 18 of them in, test them all at once and do it an automated way and then take them out of the machine, <laughs> load the next, next batch in, um, that would be very, very useful for these SSD makers. Um, and if they were to order that in mass, um, there's a the potential um, just for one of these makers of SSD memory uh, to 10X the business of air test systems. Um, so that's the opportunity. Um, let me open it up for questions. Uh, there is Q and A on the Zoom. Okay. Um, did share YouTube. Um, what else? So there's some links to on semi. ST microelectronics. Um, so the other thing we see here is um, Wall Street is underestimating the growth of silicon carbide. Again, um, the number of devices that goes in the traction inverters is very high. 
um, compared to the number of devices that might go into solar or a charging EV charging um, uh, pile or station. Um, so the main thing driving this is the growth in electric vehicles, and they're only projecting that electric vehicles grow by, or that silicon carbide grows by 40% a year um, for the next 10 years or so. Um, I think it's growing faster than that. I know that seems <laughs> kind of scary and radical, but if you're um, familiar with Tesla, you, you probably agree. Um, the other thing is that they're relying on an endpoint for electric vehicles where I think a year ago, McKinsey and Wood, McKinsey Wood or whatever was saying 30% electric vehicles by 2030. Um, now they're saying 50%. Um, I think uh, many of us believe that it's gonna be much higher than that. So when, when Wall Street is looking at these different companies and um, there was no, <laughs> Wall Street analysts uh, on air test systems before I did my write up. There was, um, there might have been from the the bank. There's this uh, um, bank uh, that is escaping me right now, but they they helped uh, air test systems do a an equity raise last year. Um, but air has not needed the money. They're using it um, as a reserve if they need to rapidly grow their ability to serve their customers is high in the in the latest interview. Gain Erickson said that if if they needed to, um, they could uh, be able to deliver like nine or so units in a month. Um, so he said $40 million in revenue in a month. Um, so their the ability for them to provide um, for their customers in a rapid way if they they, they all kind of weighed in at the same time. You're going to have on semi is going to be growing their capacity more. Uh, Wolf Speed hasn't, uh, they may have ordered one system, but they're going to need a lot more. Um, not sure if the, the other one's from on semi, uh, but then gain, uh, there's other players like ROM, um, there's like uh, MPWR, um, there's there's other players and what Gain also shared is that there are two large semiconductor makers who um, have no uh, announced plans for um, silicon carbide MOSFETs. That's what these chips are, the MOSFETs. They have no announced plans for them um, and they intend to uh, wade into this and become a top five player. Um, so <laughs> you have a lot of people going in and it's it's possible that the silicon carbide chips become a commodity over time become um you know oversupplied over time um but the person or the company providing them with the the shovels and picks to mine that gold is air test systems is a key enabler um there was one other aspect here. So if you have a question, go ahead and ask in the q and A. Um, I'm going to uh, you can raise your hand on Twitter spaces. Um, I am recording this. This will be on um, YouTube as well. Um, and I'll just turn up my phone if someone has a question. oh, the the other piece is that. Um, mainly it's a serious electric vehicle players that have um, that are doing existing business in silicon carbide MOSFETs. It's it's Tesla. Uh, Neo just started to replace um, some of their stuff with silicon carbide MOSFETs. Um, when Mercedes did that demonstration, they were using uh, silicon carbide MOSFETs from OnSemi. Um, that's what they're using to get the better range. So eventually they're going to have to transition, in my opinion, um, from silicon, uh, and it's it's called IGBTs. Uh, you're going to have to transition from that to the silicon carbide MOSFETs. And um, what Wolf, what OnSemi has been able to show them and probably others is that you can take an existing inverter and almost like drag and drop the silicon 
uh, carbide MOSFETs into that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I'm going to post the recording to YouTube. Again, this is not investment advice. Um, and uh, just wish you all well. Take care. Bye for now.